Joining us now is Satori Fund founder Dan Niles. Dan, it's always good to talk to you, and, and I'm glad you're very transparent on Twitter about what you're doing because it sounds like you you were buying yesterday, right? Net going net long. Yeah, well, uh, day before yesterday, uh, we we went ahead and covered most of our shorts, and our, our feeling was, if you could kind of go back through our posts, we thought oil was probably peaking out. Uh, we thought that would drive yields lower. And in that environment where you've gotten such oversold conditions in different sectors, not all of them, we thought that was a good opportunity. And so one of the sectors that actually we really went and bought a lot of was the Russell 2000 type stocks. I mean, those were down 22% last year, down another 2% year to date this year. And they don't have the same kind of dollar exposure that the S&P 500 has or the Magnificent Seven. And so that's kind of what we're um, you know, investing in going into earnings season. But, you know, we're short term bullish, but make no mistake, we're long term bearish because of, you know, the three bears that we see on the horizon. And that's how we're viewing things. OK, but just first on the short term call, since you since you are willing to put it out there, you were right mm -hmm. on the oil call seeing a steep drop there, but not so much on stocks and bonds, which are not rallying. Well, the stocks and bonds, you got to remember, they're chopping around right now. So for us, the big thing, and we've talked about this before, I wake up in the morning, first thing I look at is oil, because that seeps into all sorts of different things. So the food you get in your grocery, you know, your grocery store, that's got to be shipped there. Um, built materials, a lot of that's created with energy or oil, plastics, et cetera. So it seeps into a lot of different things. And oil's now gone from mid-90s, and we put out a post on this, and now it's down to the mid-80s. And so that's going to take a lot of pressure off. The, the bigger or the bigger concern we have is actually the dollar, which is that's gone up about 7 percent um, since mid-July, which is when most of these companies guided. And if you look at that, um, you've got 20% of the Russell is outside the U.S. in terms of revenues, but that goes to about 30% of the S&P 500. If you look at the Magnificent Seven stocks that are up about 90% year to date, that number is 53% of their revenues are outside the U.S. So that's what we're really paying a lot of attention to going into earnings season. We're short two of the Magnificent Seven. We're, we like two of them, as I'm sure we'll get into. And the rest of them we have some concerns about um, in terms of the forward outlook based on what the dollar is doing and, and what oil is doing. Yeah, dive into that, Dan, because we have talked about uh, shorts on Apple before, haven't we? Yeah, and we're still – that's – yeah, so to be transparent, that's one of the two names we left the short on. <laughs> so because I look at Apple and between the overheating issues with the iPhone, between the fact that they've got 57 percent of their revenues outside the U.S. and they got to deal with a dollar that's up uh, 7 percent since they guided last roughly, you know, this is going to be an issue. And, you know, I've been talking a long time about the fact that you've had three down year over year quarters in a row four revenues. They guided to a fourth. That'll be the first time since 2001 they've had four quarters in a row of down year over year revenue. So the bulls can talk about services and whatever they want, but that's included in those numbers. And they're down. And you have, you're paying a 30 multiple for it. So you're taking a lot of risk going into this. And you talked earlier a segment about Clorox, low expectations, stocks still getting hit. Conagra, low expectations. Constellation Brands, to me, is even more interesting because they beat revenues and EPS in the stocks down today. So this stuff matters, and the multiple you pay, you know, puts an envelope around the risk you're taking, especially when the S&P is trading at 20 times.